You have a talk that's titled, I've been hacked, now what? Yes. How do most people initially discover that they've been hacked? I would say the number one way is either Google sends them a scary message that says we've banned you for you know, inappropriate content or malware, or they notice on their Google search results that they're now advertising something that they don't actually sell. So it's usually through Google that they find out. Um, a lot, sometimes, though, through hosting companies. Hosting companies will say, hey, we noticed you're sending out a lot of spam emails. And they're like, what? I'm not sending out spam emails. So right. it's usually some sort of scary email from a company letting you know that you're doing something wrong, unfor is, unfortunately. Is there usually a gap between when you were initially hacked and when you start getting those absolutely. notifications? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, it used to be that you'd get hacked and right away something would start happening. But hackers have gotten a lot smarter and now what happens is they penetrate your site, they'll put something in there, and it sleeps for a while. Could be months, could be a year. And then all of a sudden it activates and starts running. And they try to do that to hide their initial point of entry. So when somebody has been hacked, what is the very first thing that they should do? Um, the first thing you should do is probably, um, first of all, change all your passwords. Every single thing, SSH keys, even passwords to admin panels and everything. And contact your hosting company, especially if you're on shared hosting. If you're on shared hosting, the hack probably came in through your shared hosting company, not through you. So let your hosting company know right away. So you've been hacked. Yes. <laughs> you know you've been hacked. You've started these initial steps. At what point should a regular person realize they need outside help? Is there a tipping point? Is there some type of thing that they should be paying attention sure. to? Sure. Um, if you're not comfortable navigating the code and modifying the code on your server, you should absolutely have someone else help you with it. Um, cleaning up a hack requires making sure you've caught every single little thing on the server. And so if you don't know your server environment very, very well or know the code base very, very well, I would recommend having someone else do it. So if you haven't popped the hood on your server before... Right. Don't, don't, don't I mean, try it. You can try it, but you probably won't catch everything. And if you don't catch everything, it's like you didn't catch anything at all. Okay. Do you feel we've reached a point, I'm kind of expanding the scope on this a little bit, do you feel sure. we've reached a point where the big hacks that we hear about all the time are just kind of the norm? Um, I hope not. But it does sort of seem that way. I think it's really unfortunate because I feel like these sort of big hacks should still be a big, scary thing that happens and we should all be horrified and try to figure, make sure it doesn't happen anywhere else. But it does seem that people are getting a lot more laissez-faire about it. Right. Like, oh, yeah, my credit card's been stolen again. No big deal. Right. But it, it is a big deal. And it's still something we should take very, very seriously. Or you hear about a big organization being hacked. Like, oh, well, that happens, yeah, right? It does, yeah. Last question for you. What mm -hmm. people or projects are you following these days? Um, I'm working a lot with Joined In, which is an online speaker feedback website, so you can collect feedback for talks, which is really helpful for me as a speaker. And, uh, yeah, that's probably the biggest one. I'm also working on Madison PHP Conference, which is um, a conference that my user group is running. Great. Well, thank you for being with us. Yeah.